The menstrual cycle includes a series of hormonal changes and structural changes in ovaries and uterus of female reproductive system. We see the hormonal changes includes the changes in FSH, LH, estrogen and progesterone. And in the structural changes we have the changes in follicles and structural changes in endometrium tissue. Furthermore, we see the menstrual cycle is divided into two cycles, ovarian cycle and uterine cycle. The ovarian cycle occurs in ovaries, where we have the release of hormones, development of follicles and release of eggs. Whereas in uterine cycle, we get the growth of endometrial tissue, blood and nutrient supply to tissue. And we also see the shedding of the tissue if no implantation occurs. We see the ovarian cycle has got three phases, follicular phase, ovulation and luteal phase. And the uterine cycle has also got three phases, menstruation aka periods followed by proliferative phase. And then finally we have the secretory phase. It must be noted that when the follicular phase is driven in ovaries, that time we have the menstruation and proliferative phase going on in the uterus. And in the same way, luteal phase is driven in the ovaries, that time we have the secretory phase going on in the uterus. Here in this table we have the cycles on the left showing pre-ovulatory phases and post-ovulatory phases. First in the ovarian cycle we have the follicular phase. And at that time in uterine cycle, we have the periods and proliferative phases going on. After that we have the ovulation event which is followed by luteal phase in ovaries and secretory phase in uterus. Now moving forward, we see this menstrual cycle doesn't start at birth, but it's at the puberty where the first period occurs, that's termed as menarche. It's around 8 to 16 years of age, but remember, this menarche varies significantly by geographical regions, race, ethnicity and other factors. Then we see after several cycles, the female reaches menopause, which is a stage where the period stops, there is no menstruation and its onset is around 45 to 55 years of age, but this also differs geographically. And the complete cycle ranges from 20 to 35 days, with an average cycle of 28 days. The menstruation, proliferative phase, follicular phase stays for first 12 to 15 days. Then we have the ovulation between 13 to 16th day. Most probably this ovulation occurs at 14th day. But it also varies. It can be 13th day or even 16th day. Then we have the luteal and secretory phase, which starts from the 15th day of cycle to the 28th day. But it can go to the 30, 31st day also. So we can say there are variations. So it should not be standardized that ovulation will always occur at 14th day of cycle. Now let's explain the phases in detail starting with follicular phase. This phase marks the first day of menstruation. It remains or drives for first two weeks of the cycle that's up to ovulation. This follicular phase is regulated by hypothalamus pituitary axis. Here in this diagram we have the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. The hypothalamus releases GnRH which gets to the anterior pituitary and drives the release of FSH and LH. This FSH and LH will then target the ovaries and uterus. We see in the diagram we have the secondary follicle. It has got oocyte in the center. Then we have the granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte. And finally there is a layer of theca cells. The FSH and LH target these theca and granulosa cells. Here in this diagram we have the theca cell on the left with LH receptor and on the right we have the granulosa cell with FSH receptor. And we also see the LDL molecules getting inside both the cells and getting converted into cholesterol. First of all theca cell receives LH which drives camp signaling as shown in the diagram. Then activating the PKA and Krebs molecules. Then this crab molecule gets to the nucleus where it mediates the transcription of P450C17 molecules. This P50C17 is then localized in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now this cholesterol which is already present within the theca cell is transported into the inner mitochondrial membrane by star protein. And here this cholesterol is acted upon by enzyme P450C17 and gets converted into pregnenolone. And this pregnenolone is further converted into androstenedione. 
let's keep this androstein dione here on the other hand we have the granulosa cell which receives fsh on its receptor as shown in the animation then it drives the camp pathway which activates crab molecule that gets into the nucleus where it drives the transcription of aromatase enzyme as shown in the diagram after that the androstein dione in the theca cell gets transported to the granulosa cell as shown in the diagram and here it is acted upon by aromatase enzyme which ultimately converts it into estradiol this estradiol is the primary estrogen produced and the follicle which has the highest number of fsh receptors will continue to thrive and in the meantime other recruited follicles become atretic moreover the estradiol or estrogen sends a negative feedback to the pituitary gland not to synthesize fsh and lh more and then these granulosa cells also expresses the lh receptors after these events next we see simultaneously we have the uterine cycle running endometrium lining is degraded what we call as periods then it's followed by proliferative phase where we have the thickening of endometrium as shown in the diagram we see the growth of endometrial glands and the emergence of spiral arteries which have been shown in the diagram then just at the end of follicular and proliferative phase we can see in the diagram the estrogen and lh peaks a surge in both the hormones this peaking of hormonal levels leads to the ovulation that's the release of egg following the ovulation or the release of egg the follicle becomes corpus luteum after releasing the egg as shown in the diagram then lh surge initiates the luteinization of thecal and granulosa cells after that these luteinized thecal and granulosa cells have the increased expression of p450 scc enzyme which converts cholesterol to pregnenolone and also after the ovulation we get the expression of important enzyme that's hsd3b which acts on pregnenolone and converts it into progesterone that marks the entry of luteal phase so from here we have the secretory phase of uterine cycle or the luteal phase of ovarian cycle this is from the 14th day up to the 28th day in the luteal phase the corpus luteum produces progesterone which makes endometrium receptive for implantation and at that time we have the low levels of fsh and lh on the other hand in secretory phase the spiral arteries grow larger and uterine glands secrete more mucus if fertilization does occur the cycle will cease to exist after pregnancy but in the absence of fertilization by sperm the corpus luteum atrophies leading to decrease in progesterone levels and estrogen levels which is followed by the increase in fsh and lh concentrations the hormone levels throughout the cycle is shown in this diagram where at the start of cycle we have the fsh lh estrogen and progesterone at low levels and then at the ovulation we have the estrogen and lh peaking and we also see fsh making a little bump here but just after the ovulation the fsh lh levels fall considerably which have been shown in the diagram whereas the estrogen drops slightly but here we see just after the ovulation the progesterone levels shoot up and we get the progesterone peaking at mid luteal phase as shown in the diagram then at the end of cycle all the hormones drop off to begin the next cycle if fertilization doesn't occur so this is how menstrual cycle drives in female reproductive system comprising of two sub cycles going together in ovaries and uterus i hope you like the video if you like it give it a thumbs up to consider supporting my work on patreon or youtube and make sure to subscribe to the channel thanks